All right, let's get rolling. Um, good morning, and, and thank you all for being here. It, it's, it's game week. It's taken us a while to get here, but we are finally here. And uh, really kind of just grateful to open, open the season. Uh, I told our staff this morning, and, and I'll share with our players this afternoon when we get together, um, I think we need to find joy in coaching and playing uh, at this time of the year. So many things going on in the world. Um, you know, thoughts and prayers go out to everybody in Louisiana uh, dealing with – Hurricane Ida, and then um, military forces in Afghanistan and, and everywhere, especially those families that have lost loved ones. So, you know, a lot going on in the world that's that's negative, and and hopefully, you know, our fans and and our players and our staff can really find some some joy in the opportunity to get out and compete this week. And so, um, excited about starting the season. Um, I'm glad we're on the road uh, to start off. I really am. We had some struggles there last year, so. Um, we're looking to, uh, to to play much improved than we did a year ago on the road. Starting off with a rivalry game versus a very talented Maryland team. Coach Loxley and his staff have done a great job recruiting. Uh, I know they had a top 20 class last year, and, and you can see that talent in being displayed on all three phases. Um, difficult first game. New coordinators in all three phases for them. Um, start with offense. Um, their spread, their mul multiple uh, tight end quarterback, receiver, their skill set, their skill players are really talented. Um, a quarterback, really talented kid. Um, saw him play multiple times in high school. He's a winner. Um, he's a dual threat. He can run the football. He throws it intermediate area in, in deep. Throws in, has nice touch. I know that from seeing him live. Um, Receiver-wise, very talented. You know, maybe as talented as anybody we're going to play this year. Um, they are uh, – They're um, probably four to six guy, quality guys there at the receiver position. Um, it starts for them at receiver with Demas and Jarrett, and I think those guys are, are NFL players. Uh, explosive. It's going to be a great challenge for us. And then the tight end's back. And the tight end's a really good player. He's an NFL prospect. I saw he was on the senior bowl watch list as well. Um, so just their talent, just their skill on, on offense is going to be a challenge for us. Defensively, I thought they played extremely well at the end of last season. If you look at the, their stats, last three games, uh, impressive. They're big up front. Uh, number 34, he led the Big Ten in, in, in sacks last year. Um, the number 30 who plays the edge for him, he had a huge game against Rutgers at the end of the season uh, when he came back from in injury. And they're very good in the back end. They, they challenged people their last three games. Now, what they're going to do with the new coordinator to be determined, uh, but they're talented. Uh, Stills was uh, – uh, we recruited him really hard. And uh, he was a freshman All-American. He had a great year. Um, and then on special teams, uh, their kicker returns, he's, he's been very solid. They have a right-footed punter and a left-footed punter that they use, and they've been, they've been good as well. And so, with that, I'll, uh, I'll take questions. Yeah, it, I think there's just the unknowns. You know, I, until you go out and play a game, I'm not sure that you know for sure what you have. Um, you know, I, I think the the college really system has flaws. You know, I, I've been a big proponent for a long time. I think college football is is lacking behind. You know, high schools have scrimmages. Uh, NFL teams have preseason practices or preseason scrimmages, and then they have dual practices. You know, I think there's a, mod, a model out there in college football that we should explore that gives us an opportunity. I, I'm, I don't know if we need to scrimmage uh, because our numbers are so low, but I think there's a way to practice um, with with another team, you know, even maybe somebody at a lower level, um, just to line up and play against somebody other than yourself because I, I think that any coach that says they know what they have, you know, I, I don't know if I'm believing them because you're lining up and you're playing against yourselves the whole time. And so – that's probably the biggest concern, you know, is just, you know, where are we at? Now, it's time to play. You know, it's definitely time to play. We need to we need to play and kind of see where we're at and see where we need to grow. But there's always concerns just because you don't know. More unknowns with this opener because they only played five games last year and they've got so many new guys in their 2D. Yeah, yeah, fair. Well, I think they're – if you look at it, John, they're one of the – you know, have the highest – one of the highest return rates percentage-wise – on offense and defense, but there's not a whole lot to go on. There's they only played five games a year ago. Um, 
And like I said, they have new coordinators. You know, it's uh, Coach Stewart on defense. You know, he's a Baylor last year, and then he was in the NFL. It's been since 17, since he really called it. Um, so, you know, you're you're kind of, you know, kind of guessing, for lack of a better term, on that. Um, Coach Enos is the offense coordinator, and, you know, last time he called it, it was at Miami, it was at Cincinnati, and they were really good last year, obviously. And then special teams-wise – you know, they, they've got a new coordinator there as well. And so with Coach Zook, and so he's been on the staff, but he hasn't been the actual coordinator. So, you know, we're trying to use our best guesses on what we're going to see. You mentioned looking forward to playing this first one on the road. Is that just to kind of break the string from last year or the idea of, hey, we're all coming together and, you know, getting this, you know, getting all the focus, getting away from a little bit of the, Hoopla, what's the idea is there? Yeah, no, I just, you know, we need to get a bad taste out of our mouth. We didn't we didn't go on the road and perform as well. Uh, that hadn't been a, the case historically. You know, we played our best football on the road in 19, you know, winning at Kansas State and winning at TCU. So, um, and then historically for our, for our staff, we've played really well on the road, you know. Um, so, I don't think it's a an issue, but we still got to go out and win on the road, which we didn't a year ago. Yeah, I think that was something that was lost last year. I don't think the the newcomers that played – we played several freshmen a year ago. Um, we played our first game with nobody here against Eastern Kentucky. So, they were maybe able to get um, into the flow. There maybe weren't as many nerves as there normally would have been. And then we went and you – know, I don't know what they what they said the percentage was at Oklahoma State, but there was a pretty good crowd there. So, And, um, and that's the way it was for – for most of the games last year, you had a feel, even though it maybe wasn't as many people as normal, it was loud, whether it was stadium noise or whatever. Um, so outside of our, our first game and maybe our second game, we played Baylor here. You know, our guys played in pretty good atmospheres, but it is going to be different. It's going to be different for the Wyatt Milans, the Caden Prathers um, that, you know, I'm just thinking on offense that their their first college football experience is going to be quite a, quite a bit different than – Zach Frazier's was last year playing against an empty stadium in Eastern Kentucky. Have you developed? Have you decided who's developmental squad? What freshmen are going to play? We got we got an idea. You know, we really do. I think offensively, you know, I'll start right there. Is is Caden Prather? He'll be in the rotation. He's going to play. Um, Wyatt Milam will be will will play at some point. I think those are. Um, you know, Justin Johnson will probably see some playing time offensively. Um, defensively, we, uh, you know, both transfers at linebacker, not their first college action. Um, and then uh, Charles Woods also. Um, Aubrey Burks is a possibility, you know. And then and then Kerry Martin, who didn't play a year ago. So those are some, some new faces, maybe – Aubrey being only true freshman, maybe on defense, um, but those are some of the the new new faces that that will play. You know, I know you talked about Casey Leg a couple weeks ago, but um, you know now that he's officially the starter, uh, can you just? It's such a unique path he's taken to get here from mm -hmm. a small private school that didn't even have football. So, you know. What has that kind of been like for him the last couple of years, and uh, just kind of what stuck out most to you in the spring and summer fall about him? Well, he he won the job in fall camp, and I'd be remiss without with you know while talking about Casey without talking about Evan. You know, and I had this conversation with Evan. I mean, what he's been able to do in just under ten months from a really um, severe knee injury, you know, um, what he's been able to do as far as coming back and kicking. Uh, and he's going to handle our kickoff duties. Um, but I think it's, um, you know, we all need to appreciate, he needs to appreciate what he's been able to do in a relatively short amount of time is coming back and, and be able to perform at a high level. Um, Casey's just really consistent through fall camp. Um, he's done a nice job of, of changing the ball flight, um, getting it up higher. Um, the, the thing that I really like is he's so grounded in all aspects of his life. Um, he doesn't get too high, doesn't get too low. 
Uh, if you remember, he got pressed into action two years ago and really made a huge kick at Baylor that got taken away, um, but then went back against Kansas State and made a huge uh, kick as well. Struggled a little bit at the end of last year, when we, and we put Sumter in to kind of finish the year. Um, but he's a, I think it's a great story. You know, he uh, soccer player growing up, never played high school football, didn't have high school football, uh, came here and, and really kind of um, – Waited his waited his turn, uh, took advantage of his opportunities, and now he'll he'll go out there and he'll he'll kick the ball for us uh, when we line up against Maryland as a starter. Number of redshirt freshmen on the depth chart also, and you mentioned obviously last year mm -hmm. an uh, abnormal year for them. Are you getting the sense that with a more normal off season, they're getting back to where they would have been, you know, had they gone through a regular progression? first two years in the program well that that's the hope that's the hope we um we're work in progress probably on on as far as the offensive line goes you know we're not as deep as we'd like to be um but those guys that have been in our program now they're starting to we're starting to show some signs of strength and and, and development um you know and defensively it's really the only the only spot that we're really young is in the back end you know, our second group in the back end is inexperienced, and we're going to have to get them playing time. It's important. You know, these first three games in non-conference play, we've got to get them experience by the time we get to Oklahoma. Depth charts are depth charts, Neil. But, you know, what happened with the battle between uh, Daryl and uh, Jackie, and how do you see that kind of working out, even moving forward? Yeah, so Jackie missed a good bit of time. He's going to play, and he's going to be healthy for the game. But he missed some time during fall camp. Um, and Jackie's going to play a lot. Daryl Porter was our – we grade everything defensively, and he was our most productive in that room during fall camp. And he's and he's he's had some growth, and um, he's earned that opportunity. But Jackie will play and play a lot. Right tackle, then you talked a lot about that competition. Did you see both those guys playing, or you go with a hot hand? Or? No, I think both will play. Yeah, both will play. A lot of it will depend how practice goes this week. We'll have um, uh, a really this will be our hardest day of the week today, um, kind of a medium day tomorrow. And then we'll walk through Thursday, run through Friday. But uh, Tuesday and Wednesday's practice will go a long way, determine how those reps are going to be split up. Rakeem Jarrett, big, big time reputation. Is there enough honor to see what he can do? Looks like he's going to return kicks. Yeah, you know, I, yeah, you just turned on the Penn State game from a year ago. You know, he takes two to the house. You know, runs away from from Penn State's DBs, you know, and, and a huge win for them. He goes over 100 as a true freshman. You know, you can watch his high school tape. I, you know, he he's he's super talented, and I expect him to be more comfortable than he was a year ago. Um, so he he's a threat. He's he's a threat. We've got to locate him. We know they're going to try to get him the ball a bunch of different ways. Uh, they lined him up multiple positions last year, and I think he'll be even more of a focal point for him this year. Yeah, he um, he he'll rotate some at guard and at center, um, but he but he's moved into our second center position. He's had a solid fall camp. Um, he got sick a little bit last week and missed some time, um, but I, I like his potential. I really do. He uh, he's a guy that's uh, that's feisty. He uh, he's a smart football player. Um, you know, I think the center position is something that's not as natural for him. Um, but we forced it through the spring and into fall camp, and he's starting to communicate at a high level. And, and his his confidence in playing that position, our confidence in him playing that position, has continually to to grow and feel good. If he if he needed to go in there, we feel good about him. Neil, it seems like you can both throw and run the ball, and then you've got what looks like a balanced offense there. Going against a defense that you're not sure what they're going to do, like like you're doing now. How do you how do you set it up? Yeah. What are you gonna do? But, yeah, yeah, I think that what you do is you go into it uh, and you got to have the ability to adjust. And more your game plan goes into, okay, what are you best at? Like coming out of fall camp, you you rep your whole package. And of that package, you know, and our defense does multiple things. They give us a bunch of different looks in fall camp. So coming out of fall camp, um, and it's not necessarily predicated on what we were good at last year, okay? So, um, you know, because the pieces are different. And so coming out of fall camp is 
all right, what were we the very best at, and then who do we want to feature? And so we take the the concepts or the schemes that we're the best at leaving fall camp, and then the players that we want to highlight, and that's what we focus on, uh, rather than because it, it, guessing at best what they're going to do defensively. You know, obviously how they played last year and what he's done in the past when he called it, you, it it's just a guess. You know, we don't we don't have 100% knowledge in what they're going to do. But so I think we got to focus on our players and our schemes that we have the most confidence in um, and that we've had the most success in, and that's what we'll use going into the first contest. Neil, you had discussed some of those young defensive linemen. You needed those guys to step up. Do you like what you saw out of some of them as camp? Yeah, yeah. I thought uh, Jalen Thornton and Jordan Jefferson really earned those, those backup opportunities. And we needed them to make a step going into fall camp, and they did. Um, you know, one person that's not going to play, uh, Darrell Middleton, he'll be out. Uh, for this game, uh, he. Uh, but I thought Jalen and 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 JJ did a nice job, and they're they're ready to play, and they're playing the best football of their careers right now. O'Laughlin and his progress and return to play. Yeah, so so O'Laughlin and and Tony Mathis will kind of be game day decisions. You know, I, I'm not real sure how it's going to play out. You know, um, I think it does. I think it has some implications. You know, if we're playing them at the end of the year, probably a little bit more so, closer to signing day. But I think it definitely does. I mean, that's an area that's that's important to us. Um, you know, Laxley and his staff have done a nice job of going in and, and keeping a lot of those DMV kids right there. You know, and I think there's, that's their goal. Uh, the more success they have, the, the better they're going to – they're the better they're going to be able to do that. Um, I think going in there and getting a win – you know, will will help our efforts for sure. Were you aware of the DMV town before you got here? Yeah, we started getting into it at Kentucky when I was a coordinator. Yeah, we – and, you know, it's really become, you know, probably in the last 10 years nationally. And, and the way recruiting's worked, it, it's it's completely changed. You know, um, there's really no regional recruiting anymore at the at the highest level. It's, it's, it's taken on the more of a national uh, look. But that was something that – that we were noticing at Kentucky uh, at that time, back in 13 and 14, I think we were one of the first schools that were kind of going north in the SEC. Now everybody's doing it. Um, but, yeah, it, it's a really talented group, you know. And I think the other thing, too, there's obviously a lot of population there. So where there's a lot of players, there's going to be a lot of – I mean, where there's a lot of people, there's going to be more football players. Just that's the way it works. Um, but I think the coaching – has increased it was such a basketball area for such a long time and it's still a quality basketball area but the football has really improved coaching there's a lot of really good programs in that area you take the maryland coaches they can make a five minute drive and get what they need yeah yeah they, they yeah yeah they can uh well traffic's a little different too though john you know what i mean <laughs> yeah Probably a little. It's probably a little easier to maneuver around Cheat Lake than it is College Park. What do you think, Tony? <laughs> Your message to Jared Dengue this week. What, what do you ask him to do? Man, I I really just want him to enjoy the process. You know, enjoy the process of of getting prepared. Um, we talk a lot about about earning the right. You know, and he's earned the right. He really has. He's he's earned the right. Um, he is. He is we, – we, we've been talking about with our team is, you know, there's dreamers and there's vision, and there's people that have visions. And dreamers, to me, they they have this, you know, this dream of, of the type of player they want to be or what the end result. But they really – it's just kind of a dream. They just kind of think about it. And then there's people with visions, and, the, and there's the people with visions, they have a plan, and it's about action. And it's hard because there's things you got to do to receive the outcome that you want to. And he's a guy with a vision. He he's earned the he's earned the opportunity to go out and compete and compete at a high level. Um, my expectation and my belief is he's going to play well. And there's nothing I've seen over the last nine months that would tell me any different. 